blessed be doll faces. I'm um, having a few thoughts this evening and I thought rather than write everything down in my book of mirrors because I've been writing so much by hand lately and my hand is getting so tired, I'm getting cramp. So I thought rather than write everything down in my book of mirrors I'd prefer to just posit some thoughts in a video. It's probably going to be a bit long and rambly but I opened sacred space tonight. I really just needed some messages from spirit, I just needed to reconnect, I needed to have some downtime. So I opened up a circle and just decided that I was going to try and take some direction from spirit and centre myself completely. And then I ended with an hour long meditation, I did some crystal work, gave myself a reading, the reading was pretty intense, and ended with an hour long meditation which was just the ticket, it was exactly what I needed. I'm burning some white musk at the moment because I find it to be uh, really good for meditation personally, white musk. I think it's um, a very underrated incense. And I'm burning some pink candles, I've got my angel here, I've got my oracle cards, my tarot cards, an amethyst, a rose quartz, a clear quartz point, and a tourmaline. So that was me tonight in the circle just doing my thing and I just wanted I suppose to put some thoughts out there just kind of using a video as a replacement for the book of mirrors if that's okay with you guys. So I mentioned that the reading was intense, it really was intense, I, I kind of, I used the oracle deck to ask for messages of support and encouragement from spirit and to make me feel more connected to life, the universe and everything. I think even as a diehard pantheist there are times where you feel completely alienated or alone, there are times where you don't feel connected to anything and you recognise that feelings such as resentment and isolation are coming thick and fast but it really makes you feel out of touch with your beliefs and with what you really feel to be true about every single cell in your body I suppose so sometimes sacred space just opening sacred space and allowing messages to come to me really helps me to feel like I'm back in the swim and I'm in a really up and down place at the moment so it has been helpful the first oracle card that I received was the third eye chakra which was amazing because I really felt as though spirit was telling me something, the source was telling me something about my connection to the all and about how I sometimes open sacred space when I've forgotten about that connection and I open sacred space when I've forgotten about my sacred knowledge and about the oneness that I feel with everything and about the fact that every single cell in my body is its own universe. I'm a biosystem. I'm enormous and strong and yet I've also humbled and minuscule and both of those perceptions, both of those ways of seeing things and ways of being are perfectly okay. So I kind of took the third eye chakra message to be a representation of that reminder that I need, that I already know what I need to know and I already am where I need to be. I just sometimes forget, I sometimes have this momentary lapse of concentration. And then I also received the awareness card, which was amazing. I kind of feel like I sometimes don't see myself as the spiritually centred being that I really am. I flounder. I think that's true of everybody. I think we all have those moments where we can't enjoy what we've amassed spiritually and we can't feel that we can get the answers from within. And when you start looking from without, I mean, certainly it's true for me, when I start looking from without, spirit often gives me that slap in the face that I need, that very gorgeous but almost aggressive reminder that what I need is within and I just need to access it, I need to find a way to roadmap towards it. And I also received the positive movement forward card which got me thinking a lot about my future direction, about the positive steps that I've already taken. It was a kind of like, um, it was a pat on the back I suppose for me, it made me feel really uplifted, it made me feel so soothed and it was what I needed at that time to really meditate on and in asking for advice I received the page of pentacles reverse which was it was sobering in a lot of ways I think that I am very impulsive I'm very reactionary sometimes even now with all the growing that I feel that I've done there are still these parts of me that tend to just leap out of nowhere without looking which is strange because when I was a child apparently I was I had a great deal of caution as a child I wouldn't leap before I looked my mother said I took great care of my physical well-being I wasn't the kind of kid that would climb up trees or scrape their knee falling off a bike or do anything that seemed kind of wild or spontaneous I was very very reserved and I was very 
in and of myself. And I think as I've gotten older, some of that has shed away. I am more impulsive. And I know that there are certain reasons for that, but I think the Page of Pentacles was asking me seriously to think about what kind of foundation I'm really building for myself at this point in my life and where the impetus is coming from. Is it coming from a pure place? So I really liked that message, but it was quite sobering. And I received the Queen of Wands. I always seem to receive a queen when I do a reading for myself in the circle. And that is just true of most times that I do a reading for myself in the circle. And I don't know how many of you read my blog or pay attention to my blog, but a while ago I actually wrote a blog post about why I named my channel and my shop and my blog The Four Queens. And it is because I really feel like I want to channel and absorb the power of each of the four queens. I want their energies to all resonate within me. And I feel most at one with myself and most comfortable with what I'm doing and most comfortable with my movement forward when I can see the energy of each of the four tarot queens within me and I know that I'm really tapping into each of them and I know that they each have a place in the four chambers of my heart if you will so that's why the four queens is uh, is so central to everything that I kind of put out there with regard to this side of my personality I really wanted it to be a name that had to do with tarot but I wanted it also to be a name that would remind me constantly of what my personal goals are and of what I want to show people about my path and about what I'm trying to become and where I'm trying to go the kind of growth that I want to embrace and the Queen of Wands is obviously the Queen of Creativity, she's dynamic, she's imaginative, she's the Queen of Fire. I think that this advice was just basically to get in touch with the purest elements of me, the things that make me who I am at ego level. And I think ego gets a very bad rep, it gets a very bad press. I'm going to talk more about that in another video, but yeah, I do think that the Queen of Wands was really speaking tonight to my ego, the good things about my ego, the things that I accept about myself, about the way I am, both good and bad, that I feel make up Kellyanne, and I'm really glad that the Queen of Wands came up because it was kind of a gentle reminder to me to embrace those parts of me that I feel are very forge forward and very assertive, very go-getting, very dynamic and very determined. And I really like that I was put back in touch with that tonight because I think I needed that too. And my final card was the Six of Wands and I think that was basically my call to victory. But it was strange, the Six of Wands got me thinking down a really strange path this evening as I was doing the reading for myself. I don't know where this came from, but the Six of Wands really put me in touch with thoughts and feelings of forgiveness and of kind of looking back over the last few years of my life, thinking about three key friendships in particular that were quite intense at the time that then kind of faded away or in fact combusted and died off quite quickly. Just thinking about how those friendships affected me, why I was drawn to the energies of those people that I was drawn to and why I need to release and let go of what's gone and understand that new things are coming. I think with intense friendships that break down, the healing that needs to happen can often be a very drawn out process. There's a lot of you invested in that friendship. There was a lot of time and a lot of truth and a lot of your secrets were given. A lot of your dark places were shared in dribs and drabs over that time. And when that all amasses together, one can feel quite violated when things don't go the way you want them to or when you feel you've been misunderstood or misinterpreted. And maybe I'll open up more about this in another video. I don't know. But I do think that there is some healing that I need to do on this point and that was something that tonight within sacred space I, I kind of accepted for myself and I feel like forgiveness has a lot of healing power it's healing for you in the end in a sense when you're struggling with the breakdown of any kind of interpersonal relationship when you're struggling with a way in which you may have been wronged or a way in which you may have been undervalued or overlooked or manipulated or judged unfairly the forgiveness in the end needs to come for you. It doesn't need to come for that other person. It needs to come so that you can move on and move forward. And some of the people that you will have forgiven in your life for ways in which they may have wronged you or treated you in a way that you didn't deserve, you did forgive for you. In the end, it wasn't about the pride that you were keeping hold of in not forgiving and in holding that grudge. It was about letting that pride go for you regardless of the other person's position in your life or in the universe or anything else you forgave because you knew that it was the way that you could release and heal and I think that is the magical power of forgiveness and I also think there's a huge healing power in apology 
And I think sometimes it's very easy to get stuck on that forgiveness cycle and kind of really absorbing yourself in that forgiveness energy that you're going to need in order to release and move forward with your life. It's often focused on to the detriment of reminding ourselves that sometimes we also need to apologise. And again, apologise for you. You don't necessarily have to apologise for that other person whom you may have wronged unintentionally, whatever the case may be. Apologising is just very healing for your soul and you don't need to do it with that other person. You don't even need that other person to be involved. You can just feel the sincere energy of apology washing over you like a wave and it is very healing. It is of substance and it is something that matters. It's something that can change the trajectory of your life. That might seem really like a load of hippie psycho babble bullshit to some people but I know for myself personally that it's true. And I've thought tonight about the ways that I may have unintentionally harmed somebody. And it was unintentional. It was completely unintentional. I never did it with malice. But there was a fundamental misunderstanding. And I want to think about the accountability that I may need to take from my side of things to put that healing into progress for me. And to feel as though that seed of healing that I'm positing in my own bank of spirit is actually moving its way out into the universe and doing its work for everybody because I'm a pantheist I totally believe we're all one we're all interconnected and any seed of health and healing that I posit can make its way into the energy banks of other people and vice versa and I really feel that when somebody has planted a recent seed of healing energy I can just feel it radiating off of them and I really vibe with that I really pick up on it and I really gel with it and I think that happens with everybody on the planet whether they realize they're doing it or not if you're spiritually centered you'll often talk about doing things like that and it won't be weird to you it won't be something that you find to be alien but even if you're not spiritually centered at all there will be times where you vibe on somebody's incredible healing energy you vibe on the release and the letting go that they have permitted to come into their hearts and you don't know that you're vibing on it you just know that you feel great around this certain person you just know that there's something coming off of them them, something radiating off of them and for me that's what it is it's just picking up on somebody's flow of energy and realizing that it's nice and it's nourishing and it's nurturing and it's giving you something I really enjoyed my hour-long meditation that was incredible I don't get as I've said before as many chances to meditate as I'd really like so it was really wonderful and I often wonder when I'm meditating what the goal is sometimes. I don't always go into meditation with a very strict, stringent goal. Sometimes it will be pure mindfulness. It will be um, some kind of body awareness meditation where I'm literally only focusing on the physical self and that is in order to completely clear my mind of everything else. But sometimes I go into meditation with a completely different agenda that I didn't even realise I had where I will begin some kind of active imagination technique or I will really let my imagination go wild and lots of things will start coming up, lots of archetypes, lots of epic scenes. It might become somewhat of a vision quest of sorts, that kind of thing. And today my meditative state went down several different routes. I did bring myself back to mindfulness every 10-15 minutes or so. I say 10-15 minutes but time is uh, not really linear when you're in the meditative state or indeed when you're in the circle. As any witch will tell you, time becomes a little bit of a liquid. It kind of moves back and forth and gels and pulls apart and jigsaws back together again. It's certainly not the clock face it was before you entered the circle, that's for sure. But I think roughly 10-15 minutes intervals, I did bring myself back to mindfulness and that was something that I needed. But I did also go off into vast reams of epic situations and figures and events and that was quite incredible and hell did arrive in my mind completely out of nowhere. I didn't ask for it. I wasn't hankering after it but yeah my patron deity was there and that's um that's something awesome and that's something I will be writing about in my book of shadows I won't go into too much detail here so I was just thinking really about affirmations now that I can use and thinking about the healing energy of affirmations and this is not something that I've always posited the benefits of but it is something that I've I've put forth for my clients and part of the reason for entering the circle tonight and just trying to spiritually cleanse and trying to get really centered and trying to focus on what matters and cut away anything that's superfluous to me spiritually is because I'm about to embark on a quite a long and intricate shadow reading for a client and I really felt like with the shadow work reading I really need to be cleansed and I really need to feel like a potent channel almost because it is 
a lot of work that I'm asking a client to embark on. It's a very, very long-term commitment. It's something quite profound. And I feel that my heart and my mind needs to be truly in it. And it got me thinking about the fact that I often give affirmations to my clients and I often suggest affirmations to friends even though I haven't always used them in my own life, but I'm slowly coming back to them in the last year or so, and I have some key ones that I'm using lately. The first one that I'm using is, I am patient, I am surrounded by love and peace. Seems like a pretty bog standard affirmation, but it's incredible to use when I'm in a moment of pure stress, when I'm becoming absolutely absorbed by pure stress, and I'm just really not sure how to get out of it. It's become a little bit of a tangle. So that's my stress management affirmation. And also, from tonight, I've decided during my time in sacred space to use this affirmation or some variant of it. I am at peace with my past and I release it now so as to embrace the future. I think this is what's really come out of the work that I've done tonight. And like I said, it came from quite an unexpected place. I wasn't aware that that was going to be the focus area. But it's turned out to be very much the focus area and I'm really glad that it, it is the focus area because that's something that I needed brought home to me and that's something from spirit that's really just kind of waved a little flag of my, in my face just basically saying look this is something that is an obstacle for you, this is an emotional blockage for you. It may not be something that comes into your mind every five minutes but that's because you push it to the back. There is forgiveness to be done, there is apology to be done, there's healing to be planted so it can grow and you know you do need to rake over some of that old ground and maybe it's one of those incredible moments of synchronicity that this message should come up for me in my sacred space just as I'm about to do a shadow work reading for a client I think that is something very synchronistic and something very appropriate the fact that I am being asked by spirit to engage in some very specific shadow work for a very specific reason to really heal from those past experiences and to release them and to allow new things to come into my life to realize that I am actually hanging on tightly to memories which generate a very difficult a very negative a very resentful or closed energy in me and I need to deal with that and I think it's really great that I'm preparing to give a shadow work reading to somebody whilst at the same time being encouraged by spirit to do a little shadow work of my own. And my crystal work went really well too, by the way. Um, I'm really starting to bond with rose quartz in a big way. I have um, a cut, kind of like unpolished piece of rose quartz, which is incredibly energetic and which I work with on and off and keep wrapped up the rest of the time. But I feel I'm really developing a bond with it. I'm also really developing a bond with green calcite. Green calcite, I think, might be the stone for me. I really feel this zesty, ridiculously dynamic energy coming off of it. And I feel I really bond with it I feel I bond with it from a place of personality. I feel there's something about the character of its sacred geometry which really links up with mine in some way. But I'm um, I'm not claiming to be any kind of crystal expert, but I am claiming to have much more of an intuitive bond. I had a huge bond with crystals when I was younger and then I completely lost it. I had a big piece of amethyst, which I absolutely adored, which I've spoken about in another video. And I had such an intense bond with that stone that I really feel it would be unforgivable for me at this stage on my path not to actually incorporate crystals much more intrinsically into what I do in practice. But I just wanted to mention rose quartz and me are getting on like a house of flame at the moment. And that's why I chose pink candles too. I really felt I needed that compassionate, warm, almost glowing energy. I feel pink for me is about dynamism and it's about joy, it's about being carefree, but it's also very much about love. And I know a lot of people say that's a cliche correspondence, but it just screams to me of love and of the liberty to love and the liberty to just let go of all the crap that's blocking that channel of love from coming through. And that's why I selected Rose Quartz tonight because I really felt that I needed that reminder. Thank you for listening, if you did, and blessed be.